The Museum of Printing, located in North Andover, Massachusetts, strives to preserve the history of printing craftsmanship in colonial America. Printmaking is vital to our understanding of early America because of the pivotal role it played as the primary format for spreading ideas and uniting the colonies. Printmaking affected the colonies socially, politically, and economically. Printmaking was important for the social development of Essex County in particular, as it provided a widespread and accessible form of social media. Newspapers connected people to one another by the announcements, events, and ideas they radiated. Literature also had the ability to exhibit new opinions and persuade readers. During the development of Essex County, printing also helped to inform and educate the county's people on current political affairs. This was vital for politics at the time, as it helped to spread revolutionary ideas that eventually led to the founding of this nation. Lastly, the printing press played a huge role in the employment of citizens during the development of Essex County, assisting it economically. In 1848, typesetting for printing was the second most popular occupation in America. Printing also produced a variety of products inexpensively, which helped contribute to the economy. In order to understand printmaking's significance in early America, one must first understand the technology that was associated with printmaking. At the time, four methods of printing existed. Mesotint, woodcut, etching, and movable type. Mesotint was invented in 1642 and was the first ever tonal method of printing. Mesotint prints could feature shading rather than just black and white values. This was achieved by giving the print plate a fine texture using a metal tool known as a rocker. This method remained popular until photography was invented, providing a better way to illustrate tone. Woodcut printing also existed in early America and had been around since the 1400s. It was a form of relief printing where non-printed areas would be removed from a block of wood. Woodcut printing was often used to create illustrations in books. Etching was another printing technique, invented in 1470. A metal plate was covered with wax, and one would etch the wax away where lines should appear. The plate was then dipped in a chemical bath that caused the exposed metal to sink in, and the ink was deposited into the sunken lines before the plate was run through a press. But by far the most popular form of printmaking used in early America was movable type. Invented in 1436 by Johannes Gutenberg, movable type eliminated the need for hand-copied papers, so printed material were faster to make and more durable. Once ink was applied to the organized type, the press was simply used to transfer the ink onto a print medium. This sped up the rate an individual could copy material from 10 pages a day hand-copied or 40 pages a day using typography to an astonishing 3,600 pages a day. Once materials were printed, they contributed greatly to the ideas and values popular during the development of America as a sovereign nation. One example of this was a pamphlet published by James Otis titled, Vindication of Conduct of the House of Representatives of the Province of Massachusetts Bay. In September of 1762, the British sent naval forces to the Massachusetts Bay to protect fisheries from French privateers. The Massachusetts House of Representatives voted against this protection, but the governor used state money to pay the British anyways. Otis argued that if the governor does not have to listen to the House of Representatives, then the people are not truly being represented. He wrote, Taxation without representation is tyranny, and the colonists coined the term no taxation without representation from this. The ideas presented in this pamphlet became the cornerstone of American revolutionary thought, that people can only be taxed by themselves or their popularly elected representatives, and that the purpose of a leader is for the good of the people, not the other way around. The purpose of the vindication of conduct was to persuade people that they could and should change government and gave justification for government resistance. Otis tried to change the minds of individuals in the British coffee house 
and the House of Representatives through his logical argument. The pamphlet was also given to ordinary citizens and those who attended town meetings in order to change their votes in annual elections. The vindication of conduct was a huge success in changing the opinions of the people, and its widespread popularity through printing only furthered the reach of James Otis's argument for government resistance. Another exceptional example of the true power of printing can be seen in the colony's reception of the Boston Massacre. On March 5, 1770, a fight erupted in the streets of Boston that resulted in five men being shot and killed by British soldiers. Three weeks later, Paul Revere began selling prints illustrating the event. The print was an engraving with watercolor on laid paper and is perhaps the best example of anti-British propaganda used in the Revolutionary War. Paul Revere manipulated the minds of colonists by the way in which he portrayed the event. The print shows the British in a straight line with angular faces, indicating a menacing aggressor. In addition, the colonists present at the Boston Massacre were laborers, but Revere dressed them as gentlemen to increase the viewers' respect for them. Paul Revere advertised his print in Boston newspapers to get it widely circulated. His efforts were successful. His print became famous, and he was able to give colonists everywhere a skewed view of the Boston Massacre, increasing anti-British sentiment and tension throughout the colonies. When it came to changing public opinion by taking advantage of printmaking to spread ideas, none were more successful than Thomas Paine. In January 1776, he published his legendary pamphlet, Common Sense. In the pamphlet, he laid out in simple, logical terms his argument for independence. He focused on attacking the corrupt monarchy due to the fact it was the only reason many colonists were still loyal to Britain. His work as a whole gave colonists justification on why they deserved independence and the confidence that they could achieve it. The pamphlet was then printed on the printing press and became a bestseller in both America and Europe. It was the most widely distributed book in American history in proportion with population, with 100,000 copies sold in three months. Upon reading the pamphlet, many individuals concurred with Paine's views, thanks to his use of progressive logic. Once this pamphlet was in circulation, provincial congresses began to tell their representatives in the Continental Congress to vote for independence, based on the people's voices finally being united and heard. All of these examples serve as evidence of how the craft of printmaking impacted the way in which the colonies communicated in the era leading up to the Revolutionary War. The colonies could communicate their plans and ideals to one another effectively, which helped immensely in achieving victory. Once the war was won, ideas for the core values and beliefs we would base our nation on were also spread through printmaking. Ultimately, the First Amendment right for freedom of press came from the fact colonists realized just how vital a role press and printing played in the development of their nation. The Museum of Printing serves as a reminder of what made all this synergy possible for the colonies to create a nation truly by the people, for the people.